for 2024. I am planning to try out a few new things here on the channel and this video is the first attempt at doing so. I thought it could be interesting to go over some of the announcements of this month, the, the news from the photo equipment sort of side of things. And this is probably something that would work a little bit better in a podcast format, but I don't think anyone particularly wants to hear me talking for one hour to myself. There are quite a few new things that were announced this month, but I'm mostly just going to focus on the ones that I find interesting. And as this channel is still currently quite small, I don't get review units or preview units of uh, camera gear. Maybe that will change in the future. But it doesn't mean that I don't have thoughts about them and can make some reasonable assumptions about some of these things. But most importantly, I'm interested in knowing your thoughts too, because I like to discuss these sorts of things and I would be really interested in hearing your feedback. So to start, there's been two new camera bodies announced in January of 2024. And the first one is one that I'm only tangentially interested in, I guess you could say, which is the new Hasselblad CFV100C. It's a very catchy name. Effectively, it's just a new digital back for their medium format system. There's a lot to like about it style wise. I think it's very interesting. It doesn't look very ergonomic or very comfortable to use. In my opinion, it looks very front heavy, but that's not really what it's designed for. I guess they have the, um, the X2D for a more ergonomic camera. I'm assuming this is the same sensor. It's a 102 megapixel Sony one, I think. Um, but because of the price and the fact that I don't shoot medium format digital cameras, that's roughly where my interest in it ends. But something significantly more interesting is the new OM-1 Mark II, or to give it its presumably full name, uh, the OM Digital Solutions OM System OM-1 II. And this is an interesting camera announcement because it feels a little bit premature almost because it's only been two years since the previous model came out. It is OM's flagship camera. And usually flagship cameras last quite a bit longer. The Z9 has been out longer than it, for example. But it may make more sense if, according to the rumors, it's correct that their licensing agreement for carrying over the Olympus name has now finished because this may make sense considering that they appear to not be continuing to make the original OM-1 at the same time, unlike say Canon, who tend to keep older models going at the same time, Sony do this as well, um, and then reduce the prices of them. But this appears to be a straight replacement for the first OM-1. It is an improvement uh, in a few ways. A lot of People, myself included, were confused as to why it's not just a firmware update for a lot of these features, but according to the Petapixel podcast, which alliterates very nicely, uh, OM say it's down to the increased RAM available in the new model. So that may be true. It does feel like the first OM1 sort of ran out of firmware updates past a certain point, so I don't know, it does feel like they could have improved a little bit further on it in the first place. And there are certain features of it which are not affected by the RAM, like the fact that the tracking mode just doesn't work at all. It, it just doesn't work right. Now, the most interesting upgrade over the first version of the OM-1, at least from my point of view, is the increased buffer capacity. This is something that was a moderate problem on the first version. It did about 96 raw photos before it hit the buffer limits. And that was a problem because it's only an SD card supporting camera. If it took CF Express type B cards, for example, it would likely be able to get quite a few more because of the increased write speeds. Using V90 cards in the OM-1 and now the OM-1 2 will give you the best performance. And it does make a significant difference over V60 cards. But because of that, and at the higher frame rates that the camera could support, you could quite quickly hit the buffer limit and it would slow down, which is frustrating when you're trying to shoot a longer action sequence, or if you're trying to use the pre-capture mode in the camera, you hit that limit very quickly. So that's a really nice upgrade. 
they've changed a few other things on the camera as well and it looks like a decent progression of the first OM1 and it fixes a few minor issues that a few people had with that camera. It is however very slightly more expensive. Um, that could just be the difference in two years worth of increased production costs and stuff like that. So yeah, nice camera. I'm looking forward to trying it out at some point because I think the first version of the OM1 was an excellent camera and I suspect this one is too. So sticking on the subject of OM system, but moving on to lenses, they announced two new lenses. The 9-18mm f4 to 5.6, which as far as I can tell is just a recase and rebrand of an old lens from the Micro Four Thirds system that's over a decade old. So that's a nice change, it's a nice upgrade, but as far as I know they've not changed anything about the lens coatings or the performance of that lens, it's just that they want to continue selling it and are therefore changing the branding. Far more interesting is the 150 to 600 f5 to 6.3. This lens may look familiar to you. And that is because it appears to be a recasing of a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter f5 to 6.3 sport lens that you can get on E mount or L mount. I've shot with the Sigma 150 to 600 on L mount, and it's a very nice lens. It's a nice upgrade over the DSLR versions of those lenses, it's significantly lighter than the DSLR version of the sport lens. And as far as I can tell from looking at the OM system lens, it's effectively the same. It has the same element count, group count, all that sort of thing. The only thing that has changed is that the control layout has moved on the outside of the lens and it's branded with OM system. Something that continues to frustrate me with uh, Micro Four Thirds has been kind of highlighted by this lens, I suppose, and that is that synchronized image stabilization between the lens and the camera body is only on the same manufacturer in Micro Four Thirds. So Panasonic lenses on Panasonic bodies work, OM lenses on OM bodies work, but when you swap the two around and use a Panasonic lens on an OM body, the synchronized image stabilization does not work. For a format that is having a, a sort of a down period, I suppose, where it's not quite taking off as they would hope, you would expect them to make it a little bit easier for people moving into the system to have access to all the lenses that are available. And there could be arguments about the different software, all those sorts of things, but ultimately, there's no real reason for it, and that's illustrated very well by this lens existing, because this is a Sigma lens, not an Olympus lens or an OM system lens, and it's not a Panasonic lens, it's a third party lens that presumably has its own image stabilization setup. Maybe the firmware is directly from OM system, but clearly it could work with either, and that feels like a flaw in the Micro Four Third system, and if they want to revitalize the platform, it's something they should really sort out. So yes, the 150-600 is an interesting lens. It's effectively a 1200 millimeter lens at the long end on Micro Four Thirds. And having used the DSLR version of the lens as well in the past, and actually done a lens test on it, I found that the lens was very sharp in the center, which is great for Micro Four Thirds because that's effectively what the sensor is seeing through. It's not going to get the outer edges of the glass. So in theory, it should be a very, very nice performing lens. It's obviously not super bright, which will be a problem in terms of ISO performance on the OM-1 II, for example, but it should be a very useful and flexible lens. The only downside being the price, which is 2,500 pounds at launch. The L-mount version of the lens, and they are effectively identical, is £1,100. So it's £1,400 more expensive, and that's not really justifiable. It's notably more expensive than the 150 to 600-ish equivalents on full frame. So the Nikon 180 to 600 is about £1,900. The Sony 200 to 600 is about 1,800 to 2,000 pounds. I'm not sure what the current prices are. 
And yes, you're getting additional reach, but it's a lot of money over the cost of what the original lens was. So yes, I'm kind of expecting the price to drop quite quickly, I must admit, but I might be wrong. It might be a huge success and uh, I'll be interested to see how it gets on. It does kind of start to compete a little bit within OM System's own lens lineup, because if you're already spending a large amount of money on a fancy zoom lens for your Micro Four Thirds camera, well, you kind of also have to consider the OM System 150 to 400 millimeter, which is a brilliant lens. Yes, it's notably more expensive, but you're already spending an awful lot of money. So it does start to pop into the equation a little bit. And potentially if you see secondhand versions of it around, you know, could be quite competitive with it in terms of price. So yeah, interesting choice. I like that they are making a bit of a leap in terms of adapting some full frame lenses to micro four thirds. I think that is an interesting path forward and it actually opens up a lot of possibilities for them but we will wait and see if they do any more with it. I think that it could be a good way forward of bringing more lenses to Micro Four Thirds. There's already a lot of small lenses. I've made a video on this in the past. Some big lenses could be the right move in the future, especially if they're going down more of a wildlife route. Now there is one more lens I'd like to talk about from January, 2024, and that is the Panasonic 100 mm f 2.8 macro. It's a really interesting lens because it's so compact compared to the macro lenses of that length from other systems. I think Nikon have a 50 millimeter macro and it's roughly the same size. This is a 100 millimeter. That's seriously interesting. And it's because Panasonic make a range of prime lenses. This is the 50 1.8 that are all the same size. They are all exactly this format. And that's really interesting. They all have the same weight distribution, more or less, roughly the same weight. The front element size is different, but the filter thread size is the same. And it's a compromise on some of their lens designs because I mean, a 51.8, this is quite a big one. It could be smaller. It could be a little bit more compact, but then you look at the 85 1.8, which is the same size and that could be notably larger. They've made this for use in video. It's so that it balances better on a gimbal. And that's the case with the 102.8 as well. And that's very, very interesting that they've chosen this sort of design path. It's quite unique. But the weird thing is that these are great performing lenses. This is a lovely photo lens as well as a video lens. And from all the reviews I've seen of the 102.8, it's true of that lens too. It seems to be a very nice performer for portraiture, product photography, macro photography, all that sort of stuff. It's a very, very interesting lens. So it may be something that I take a look at more in depth in the future. It's something I definitely like to try out because it's kind of unique, really. And uh, overall, I think Panasonic's prime lens lineup is one of the most interesting and beneficial ones around. They've made nice compromises in the design and yet not compromised the image quality. And there's something nice to be said about that, really. So that's pretty much it as far as this roundup of January photo gear news goes, or at least the bits of it that I find interesting. What are your thoughts on these products? And have I missed anything that you are particularly interested in? I would be very curious to know your thoughts. Please do put them down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.